Hey, back to doing some testing today. I got three machines here. I got the new Dell XPS 15 with an Intel 12th generation. That's right, 12th generation chip in there. And I've got the M1 Max and I've got the M1 Ultra. What are we doing today? Well, I work with video a lot. Yes, I'm a programmer, but how do you programmatically alter video? you use something called FFmpeg. You might have heard about FFmpeg. Basically, it allows you to do whatever you want with video and audio. It's been around for a while and it's got a million different options. The documentation for it is insanely long. But luckily, one of the commenters and one of the viewers of the channel, Tolga, has reached out to me with some commands that I'm gonna execute. These commands don't even ask me to understand these things because they're crazy. I will show them on the screen, but you really need to know FFmpeg pretty well and Tolga knows it pretty well. So we're gonna be executing some of these commands here and getting the performance of each one of these machines to see how they do on video encoding. I've got two files here, both from my YouTube videos. One is a 20 second clip and one is a 60 second clip. Same video. You can see the sizes there. Now, if we take a look at the properties, this is a 4K video clip at 24 frames per second. There's the audio information there. Yeah, it's a pretty big clip. We're gonna be scaling it down using FFmpeg from 48 megabytes for a 20 second clip down to, well, we'll see what the result will be. And we'll see how long it takes. Now, for all you curious folks out there, this is the version of FFmpeg I'm using on Windows right here, which is not the same version that's built for the Apple Silicon variety, and that's this version right here. So yes, it's the same software, but they're compiled for different platforms. One is for Windows and one is for Apple. Now, Tolga sent me these commands right here for encoding a 240p file, 360, 480, 720, and a 1080p file. And these commands are pretty insane. Look at all these options. Wow. All right. I don't even begin to understand what all those are. Of course, they set the different levels of bit rates and all kinds of things. A lot of stuff in there. It gets pretty involved. If you want to learn about FFmpeg, you can check out the documentation. It's crazy. So I'm going to paste that in here. The only one little change I will make is that on Windows, the audio encoder is a little bit different. So instead of AAC AT right over here, it's just going to be AAC. And also my input file name is different. It's azvid20 seconds. Now I'm gonna run this because I don't know if this will actually spit out the time that it takes to run this thing. So let's have a look. It looks like there is no time command even using, um, what am I using here? Windows terminal. We do have a kilobyte per second value. Um, that may be enough information for you, but uh, I'm also gonna time it as well. But let's go ahead and execute the one on the Mac. All right. There we go, it's done. Uh, 100.53 kilobytes per second for that one. They both are very quick. So quick in fact that we might have to use the one minute video to really see the difference. And I really do wanna time it programmatically, so let's do that. I'm going to use something called measure command in PowerShell, which is supposed to give me the total time it takes to execute this command and it's a command let that's built into PowerShell it's called measure command. I just pass in whatever command I want into the squiggly parentheses and execute it. Okay, we have our time for Windows. Now let's do the same thing here, but on the Mac, I can use something called uh, just the time command, much simpler. Let's do time there. Okay, so the total time it took on the Mac, on the M1 Max MacBook Pro is 1.7 seconds. On Windows, the processing of the same file with the same command took four seconds, just over four seconds. I wanna see how the M1 Ultra will do. Uh, we'll do that in a second, but let's also try this on the bigger file to see how long that one takes. So this is gonna be the 60 second file and let's go, okay. Uh, for the 60 second file on the M1 Max, that took 4.8 seconds. Not bad. Now let's do the 60 second file on the Windows machine and see how long that takes. Okay, so while it took almost four times longer on the Windows machine processing the 20 second file, it took maybe about uh, just over two times longer processing the 60 second file. And there's one more thing that I wanna do for the Windows machine and sometimes the Intel machine need a little help. I'm going to plug it in. Now, the reason I'm doing that is in the past, Intel-based machines worked better or faster and more performant when they're plugged in, even if all the Windows power options and settings are set to full. So let's run that same exact thing on the Windows machine while it's plugged in. Ho, ho, ho. Wow. Okay. That is 
two times faster when it's plugged in. So make sure you plug your Intel machines in when you're working if you want to get the best performance. And I have tested the Apple Silicon machines. It does not matter whether they're plugged in or not. They perform exactly the same. And I do have uh, the high power mode turned on on this machine. So we are closing that gap a little bit, but it's still not as fast as the M1 Max. So I'm going to run that just one more time to get a bit of an average. Let's go. And we're getting consistent times here. 4.8 seconds on the M1 Max, 5.8 on the Windows machine with the Intel Core i9 12th gen chip in there. Now, let's see if we get better performance on the M1 Ultra. And yes, I am using universal control. So first we'll process the 20 second video. Let's see how long that takes. Um, it's done. 1.189 seconds. Not long at all. Now let's do the 60 second file. And that takes 3.2 seconds. I'm going to run it a couple of times here. And 3.2 and one more time. Yep. 3.2 seconds. So we are getting a significant improvement using the M1 Ultra. After all, it has 20 cores of CPU versus the M1 Max's 10 cores. So that's downsampling to 240p, but who does that these days, right? And maybe you do need to do that. However, for projects that I work on for my videos, I like to keep the quality uh, a little bit higher. So when I do the processing using FFmpeg, I'm going to use a higher resolution. So I'm going to try doing the 1080 processing now to see how that does. And this one we're going to make into a race. got this set up on the Windows machine and the M1 Max MacBook Pro. We'll do the M1 Ultra in a second. And of course, since we're doing the race, we're going to be using the Schwarzenegger. Everybody knows this one by now. Well, maybe some of you don't, but we use this to execute our tests at the same time. A little contraption I built. All right, let's press the enter key at the same time and let's go. Who's going to win? Who's going to win? And oh, well, this one's taking a bit longer. And of course, the uh, M1 Max won that one just by a tiny bit, though. Not that much. But I did expect it to win since it did so well in the previous tests. On the Windows machine, it took 9 seconds, 0.04, just over 9. And on the M1 Max, it took 8.16 seconds. So for the 1080p test, I would say the Windows machine does actually better than it did for the 240p test. Let's do that one more time to get an average. There we go. Okay, Windows machine is gaining 8.5 seconds on the Windows machine and 8.1 seconds on the Mac. Now I know what some of you are going to say that I should be using a Linux machine and running FFmpeg on that. That may be true. And because I'm doing this test on Windows, that might actually play a little bit of a role. I'm not 100% sure because I'm not an expert in FFmpeg or how that works within Windows. If anybody does know, leave a comment down below. Let's go ahead and do this test on the M1 Ultra to see how quickly that one will do it. And we're off. Wow. <laughs> Is that for real? 4.9 seconds? Let's do that again. 4.9 seconds. And one more time, that's incredible. 4.9 seconds. I'm getting consistent results on the M1 Ultra. So a huge difference if you're processing full HD videos and you're using the M1 Ultra chip. A big win for the M1 Ultra. Although in my previous test, it hasn't really been that beneficial. But if you're working with video a lot and if you're processing video programmatically using FFmpeg, for example, what else would you be using? Um, <laughs> then... Um, then this is the way to go for you. I think M1 Ultra wins this one. Thanks to Tolga for the experiment. And if you like this kind of video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel for more videos like this. I'm definitely going to be doing more testing with these machines that I have here and other machines. All right, folks, have a good day and I'll see you later.